Darren Butterflies. Well, hello all. Um, just another short one today. Um, I'm posting this one for old people like me that are in their early, late 60s, early 70s. I'm also posting it in case there's some young people out there that were around before AM radio and when radio was king going way, way back. So it might be a history lesson for some and nostalgia for others. I'll, I'll, I'll um, give an example here of media. For example, this is uh, from early 1967 in Sydney, Australia. What we have here is a top 40 chart. Look at those swinging disc jockeys. Hip. They're so hip. So with it, man. That guy in the middle at the top, Bob Rogers, is still on radio. He's about 90. <laughs> He's incredible. So, yes, they'd have like a little bio on the back. In this case, the Fifth Estate. Um, they had a hit with Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead. And I think up, up and away. Yeah, not my cup of tea. Um, oh, there you go. Look, the Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead is their hit TUE Merit Award disc. That means it's um, they've selected that to get to the top of the charts. So, what we have here at number 21. Oh, can we see it? 21. If I had a ticket, Phil Jones and the Unknown Blues. That's about as high as it got in Sydney on 2UE. There, were, there was also 2SM and 2UW, so it could have gone higher on their charts. Um, but yes, so that told you what was, you know, there's a whole list of songs on here. So that's where you, you would find, if you hadn't heard, you, whatever. So... Here's the actual record. This goes for a fair bit of money on Discogs. It's a collectible. If I had a ticket, Phil Jones and the Unknown Blues on the festival label. Original sleeve. Uh, and the street music. Forty cents. Australia went decimal in 1966. So, Forty cents. That's quite a really cool looking um, cover photo. That. Yeah. SX Music. Three twenty four Pitt Street, Sydney. So yes, it's a, it was a traditional folk song, but they gave it a real I don't know. It's got a really good guitar running through it, and um, yeah, it's very, very catchy. Uh, the, the chap in the middle, Phil Jones, went off to England after this, and um, met up with Jimmy Page was out here playing with the New Yardbirds, and uh, you know, which was just before they broke up and then he formed Led Zeppelin, and he was sort of taken with Phil Jones and the Unknown Blues, and I think he had might have had something to do with Phil Jones going to England. And he actually um, joined or formed a band there called Quintessence, which were a real ultra hippie band. Um, not my cup of tea, but um, you know, you got into all that Eastern religion and that sort of stuff. This is what they used to do in those days. So yeah, that's um, just a little bit of a, just to show that back in the old days before the internet and before FM radio and before you had, you know, um, pop magazines, you, you virtually your only way of finding out anything at all about music was to listen to the AM radio. And they had a, a diverse selection of stuff. It's amazing what they used to play. You know, you, you get some stuff for the mums and dads and then you get stuff like the Yardbirds 
followed by, you know, Harry Seacom, and it was just weird. It was a real mixed bag, but you sort of, every day without fail, I used to sit down my ear against the AM radio, pretending to do my homework, and waiting for the latest them singles to come on, or the Yardbirds, or the Who, or Beatles, or Stones, or the Kinks, or uh, so many of them. Boy, good old days. So... Yeah, that was our entertainment. You, you sort of made your own entertainment. Then you had to somehow find, go, hope you had a local record store, which we did in the uh, suburb I grew up in, south of Sydney. And then if they didn't have it in stock, you'd have to order it in. It was a real process. You know, it wasn't just click, bang, and you got it. You had to really work at things in those days. And, and to buy one of these, I would have to work... I watch windows on Saturdays for a year or two, and, and every fortnight I could afford to buy one forty-five. That's how expensive they were for you know a, a kid. I used to make fifty cents washing windows, and you know like the record cost a dollar. So yeah, two two Saturdays just to buy one forty-five. So um, and the good news, of course, at least was these were free. I've got about two years worth of them. So I think I stopped collecting in 67 when I got into blues and uh, Hendrix and Cream and, and albums. I had a job. I started work when I was 16. And um, the, this just became sort of of no interest to me anymore, the, the top 40. So anyway, just a bit of a history lesson. So anyway, um, take care all. Bye for now.